Hey, welcome to Tony Tone Barbecue. I'm Tony. And inside this Char Grill Grand Chimp XD is a two bone, six and a quarter pound prime rib roast. In this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to make an amazing prime rib. And I know a lot of recipes call for searing your prime rib at a really high heat before roasting it to your desired temperature, but I'm gonna do the opposite. I want this meat to benefit from the flavor of smoking it with splits of natural oak wood inside an offset smoker. So I'm going to start off by smoking it at a really low temperature for as long as it takes to reach an internal temperature of about 110 degrees, giving it as much time as possible to really absorb that smoky flavor. Then I'm going to crank the temperature up to around 425 degrees to sear the exterior with even more of that smoky deliciousness while giving it a beautiful and delicious crust. You're not going to want to miss what I season this roast with. And I'm also going to share with you some important fire management tips along the way. The really exciting part is going to come at the end when I have to quickly build a fire big enough to crank the temperature up to 425 degrees to sear this roast. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then finally, at the end of this video, once the roast has rested long enough, we're going to slice right through the middle of it to see how much of it is at my goal of medium rare. Let's go ahead and start right at the beginning with step one. We're going to preheat. Step number one, prep your offset smoker. That means preheat. We're gonna get this whole thing hot end to end and we're gonna go way higher than we're going to cook with. I usually go for at least 350 and then let it slowly settle down to the temperature I'm gonna be cooking at. This is gonna create a more even temperature in your cooking chamber and give you a chance to clean up your grates before you put the meat on. I also like to throw down some aluminum foil to catch the drippings whenever I can, which makes for a little easier cleanup. You can see it down in there, okay? By the way, don't rush this part. Plan extra time. Whatever time you think you need to start at, start earlier than that. To preheat, I like to start off with a chimney full of lump coal because it's just easier to work with and a simple way to establish a good coal bed. And then I add a couple of small splits of whatever wood I'm cooking with on top of the lump coal to get the temperature up higher. Notice I arranged all the wood to be to the right side of the firebox. Now I'm gonna make sure that the exhaust is wide open. Close the main cooking chamber lid. Close the firebox lid. And make sure that the side vent is wide open. At first the smoke is gonna be thick and ugly, but since this thing gets hot, heat rising and smoke escaping from the stack is going to create draw and that's going to get that fire burning hot and clean which is what we're looking for i'm also going to set a few splits of the wood i'm going to cook with on top of the firebox to start warming them up and usually i put them inside the firebox over here on the left side away from the fire that's why i had it all positioned over to the right but not until the fire is a bit more calm inside there otherwise they might catch on fire prematurely see it's only been about five minutes since i closed the doors and you can see the smoke is already starting to thin out and look a lot better. It's got a nice blue hue to it and the temperature is coming up quickly. We are almost to 250 on the top gauge here. We're showing just around 220 on the bottom left and uh, just below 200 on the bottom right, which is kind of funny. It's closer to the firebox. Usually that one's, that one's hotter. So this is why we do this. As this whole thing gets hot, there's a baffle plate in here and that's directing the heat to kind of flow into the middle and come up and come out so as this thing gets hot throughout later on you're going to see that that one's going to be probably the one of the higher temperatures that one will be also be really high and this one over here will be a little bit lower but the goal here is to let this whole thing get really hot to 350 400 degrees and then let it settle down so we have a nice even cooking temperature throughout and that'll make it a lot easier to maintain a really good quality smoke which is going to give you a great flavor and because what we're cooking today isn't going to be a really long cook 
we want to run a really low temperature around 200 to 225 degrees so that the meat has plenty of time to absorb a really good flavor from the oak wood that we're cooking with today and it warms slowly throughout the meat so we get a nice consistent temperature inside the meat. We're 10 minutes in now and we're approaching 300 degrees so now while this is preheating this is where I usually like to move on to step number two which is prep the meat. 20 minutes in and we're at about 325 and climbing. Smoke is looking good. This is a two bone prime rib weighing in at just over six pounds. And I didn't do a whole lot of trimming on it, just took a little bit of the extra fat off the uh, bone side here. To season today, we're gonna keep it super simple. Salt, fresh ground, black pepper, and garlic. I did not rub it down with olive oil or anything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and press these seasonings directly onto the meat. I wanna keep the flavoring simple for this cook because we're gonna get a ton of flavor from the natural oak wood splits that we're gonna be cooking this with. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes and the temperature is on its way back down. We're getting close to 275, so it's time to prep this thing to get that meat on the grill. First thing I'm gonna do is get this cooking wood inside the firebox to get it super hot. By arranging my wood like this, where I've got my burning pile of wood over here on the right side, and I've got my standby pieces over here on the left side, I can get them super hot so that when I take those and put them on the fire, they will light instantly and it will minimize the amount of dirty smoke I get while that wood starts burning. Preheating this entire smoker the right way gets this great nice and hot so I can clean it up really well oil it if I need to and then go ahead and install the wireless temperature probe to uh, that I'm going to use to help monitor temperature remotely. Here's a tip. Don't let your dog run off with your barbecue glove. Come here Pat. Okay smoker temperature is right where I want it nice and low. I'm going to attempt to cook this at between 200 degrees and 225 degrees for the duration of the cook. I want the temperature to be nice and low because I want the overall internal temperature of this roast to very slowly and evenly come up so that we have a nice consistent temperature from edge to edge. Once it hits about 110 degrees, I'm going to be cranking up the temperature in this offset, offset smoker to over 400 degrees, probably around 425 degrees or higher, so that I can really sear the exterior of the meat and get of a nice dark color. Doing it this way is gonna ensure that this roast is gonna slowly come into temperature and absorb as much of that delicious smoky oak flavor as possible before searing the outside, giving it that beautiful crust and delicious toasted flavor. So I've got the roast position right in the center of the grill. Notice in the back there is a temperature probe, so I know exactly what the temperature is gonna be right here in the main area where this is gonna be cooking. I positioned the thicker side of the roast closer to the firebox where the heat is coming from, so that way the thinner part of the roast won't get overcooked and it will be more consistent throughout. So that I know what the temperature inside the roast is, I inserted a th uh, temperature probe here that's connected to my Thermopro wireless thermometer that it sends a signal directly to my cell phone so I can monitor the temperature from wherever I am around the house. Now it's time to close the cooking chamber lid and just let this cook. Now that step two is complete, it's time for step three, which is just gonna be to monitor the temperature and add wood as necessary to keep the temperature in that range of about 200 to 225 degrees. To let you see what we're starting off with, that's the pile of coal that has burned down a little bit and I'm gonna let the temperature get stabilized inside the cooking chamber here since I just closed the lid. And then I'm gonna be carefully adding enough wood to get the temperature up, but not too far up. Lid down at 1240. We'll see how long it takes to get to 110 degrees internal temperature before we have to crank up the heat. All right, so during this cook, 
for best results, you're going to want to keep that fire as burning as clean as possible so you get some nice, good, clean smoke coming out of that stack. So how to do that? First of all, you want to make sure you keep your exhaust vent open as much as possible, wide open. Secondly, you're going to want to keep your intake vent also wide open. When you look inside that firebox there, unless you're burning way down to hardly any coals left, then uh, you're going to want to see some flame actually blowing that wood there looking good. I'm going to take a quick peek inside, see what we have here. I don't like opening this lid very much because I'm just letting the heat out, but I'm also not too concerned with the temperature dropping too low in this cook because in this case, eh, the longer the better. We've got a nice little pile of, of uh, wood burning here, nice and clean. We've also got some standby pieces of wood over here. They're getting super hot. And uh, next time I get to throw a piece of wood on there, I'll show you how quickly it lights up when they're really hot like that. If you don't have space inside your firebox to put extra wood there like that without catching it on fire, then you can just go ahead and put it right on top of your firebox and let it get hot that way. Probably the hardest thing to figure out when you're trying to run a low temperature like this is how big of a split of wood to use in your firebox. Um, that's something that you're really going to have to kind of figure out on your own by experimenting with different sizes, pieces of wood, and getting very familiar with your offset smoker. In this case, you can see here, the pieces I'm using are not that big, and I'm keeping that pile of wood burning uh, kind of small on the small side. If I go with a split of wood that's too big, then it's going to be putting out too much heat and I'll be forced to either remove it from the firebox or start choking off the air, which is gonna turn that smoke from a nice clear bluish color to a thicker, whiter, heavier smoke, which is gonna give the meat an overall kind of bitter taste that I don't care for. All right, so we're about a half hour in and the uh, wood pile is kind of starting to burn down a little bit, starting to create a little bit of dirty smoke. So let's go ahead and open it up and uh, throw on another piece of wood here. To start off, I just kind of give them that a little bit of an adjustment. Open that up a little bit. And uh, let's put a piece on here, see what it does. Get that right on top of the coals there. And we have flame. So I didn't blow it in this case or anything like that. Usually when I do this, if it um, looks like it's gonna catch fire right away, I might just close the lid and just let that draft kind of blow that fire hot. And, uh, or if it looks like it's gonna be putting out a lot of thick smoke for a second, I might just do what I just did and leave that door open for a minute until the fire gets going good. And then I close it up and that helps avoid getting too much dirty smoke running through your cooking chamber for too long. And that's the process we just keep repeating until the meat reaches that temperature. Just every now and then add another piece of wood, try to select a piece that is the appropriate size to get the temperature up to where I want it and uh, do it in a way that doesn't create too much dirty smoke for very long. And uh, you end up with a great tasting barbecue. This is a really nice part of barbecuing with an offset smoker. Part after you put the meat in and all you're doing for the rest of the day is just kind of managing that temperature, adding wood when necessary doing stuff like watching the game and uh, kicking back with a nice bottle of bourbon got a little woodford reserve right here this is not a paid promo or anything like that i just happen to really like this one cheers okay we put this roast in at about 12 45. it's now about 3 15 almost and the internal temperature of the roast is showing 107. So we're getting really close to the point where we gotta crank up the temperature and sear the exterior. My goal is to sear that exterior until it reaches an internal temperature of around 215 to 220, and then go ahead and pull it, and it will finish cooking. It'll usually raise another five to 10 degrees after you take it away from the fire. So I wanted to share with you also where what the temperature has been looking like. If you can see here, the bottom line on this graph 
uh, shows 200 degrees and the top line is 225 degrees and you can see that the temperature has been bouncing back and forth between 225 a few times it dropped below 200 a few times it went above 225 for the most part right in the middle there so I'm happy with that and uh, so now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and build up this fire once we get to that full internal temperature we're looking for of 10 of 110 we're almost there here we go Oh, and just to give you an idea of how long it took to go from its cold temperature, which is about 45 degrees, to its uh, just about um, 110 degrees temperature, it was about two and a half hours, which works out to roughly uh, close to half hour, pound, right in that range, just so you know. Okay, so we're at uh, 111 degrees, and I want to give you a quick idea of what the roast looks like right now before... We sear it up. This is the first time I've opened the lid. And uh, I gotta say, that looks pretty fantastic. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this lid open. And inside the firebox, let me show you what I got going on here. Got a couple small logs that are burning there just to keep that temperature. And over here, I've really got it loaded up with various pieces of wood. I tried to find as many of the smaller ones as I could. And I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna start putting them on this fire to build a big fire. I'm gonna leave this lid open, I'm gonna leave this lid open while that fire is building until it's nice and big. And then, once I feel like the fire's right, I'm gonna go ahead and close it all down and let that heat flow into the cooking chamber and really sear that sucker. We'll see how hot we can get it. All right, we got a nice pile of wood burning here, putting out some good heat. I'm gonna go ahead and close this lid now and see how high this temperature goes. Look at that temperature, 432, 434. Oh yeah, that's gonna sear that meat up nice. And how is the Grand Champ XD holding up? It's looking good, a little smoke coming off the box here. That's mostly because I coated it with a bunch of oil here for a little maintenance. And uh, take a quick peek in here. I don't wanna open this too long because I let it heat out. That fire's raging, we're looking good. And the temperature of the meat right now is at 118. We're going to let it go until it gets to uh, 125. And then I'm going to open that lid, let the heat out, and then let it start to rest. Temperature really got up there to close to 500. So I just went in there, took out a couple pieces to calm the fire down a little bit. And uh, we're looking good. We're still at 449 right now. Perfect. All right, so during this part, what do you do if your fire starts raging out of control and you start getting way too high, like around 500 degrees or something like that? Well, all you do is you open up the lid, grab yourself your, your barbecue coal tongs, take out a piece or two, have nearby you a little tabletop kettle like this guy here, put them in there, throw a lid on it, and then if you need to grab them later and put them back in, you can, but that way you can instantly reduce the temperature and keep it in the range you want. Okay, we're showing 123 degrees internal the cooking chamber temperature is holding at 449 right now. That's really hot. And I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like it's time to open this up and just let it start resting. Up oh, there it goes, 124. Now I really feel it. We're good. Let's open it up and see what we've got here, all right? Oh, yeah. There it is. Whew. Uh, it's looking really good. You see the, the fat just started peeling back up on the top there as that shrank down and uh it's got a little sizzle going on in the skin on the, on the surface uh, it's looking great that's gonna go ahead and leave this open pull this drawer out a little bit and let it start to rest we're gonna let this rest at least a good 20 minutes before we even think about carving it up all right the, this is the hard part this is where your patience will really be tested this prime rib roast looks freaking amazing I pulled it, it's gonna sit here, it's gotta rest. Right now, since I took it all out of the smoking chamber, the temperature has risen to 126, and it's still gonna keep going up a little bit. It looks beautiful, it's nice and toasted, it's gorgeous, it's not black, and that's very important. If I would've run dirty smoke during this cook, it would be black like an asteroid, and you would be tasting ash. It's just gross. This looks perfect i think it's going to be amazing in flavor and i uh, can't wait to carve into this and see what the inside looks like so right now we're at 130 
one degrees internal temperature. As I said, the temperature rose a good five, six degrees since we took it off the cooking chamber. And uh, still gonna wait about five more minutes before we carve into this. All right, moment of truth. It's been resting for about 20 minutes now. In terminal, in it up. Internal temperature came up to, look at that right there, 135 degrees. And I think it's time to go ahead and pull the probe. Let's have a look inside, see what we got. Let's cut right down the middle. Look at that. That is a beautiful, perfectly done prime rib, medium rare, all the way through. Hey, but how does it taste? All right, looks good, smells amazing, but uh, how does it taste? Hey, that is perfectly cooked. Have a look at that. That is just gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to cut off a piece right across the center here. There we go. I mean, look at that all the way through. It's just the right color. It's beautiful. Yeah. One part about this is I can just go ahead and cut this up however I want it. I don't want too big of a piece here. So let's get a taste of this. All right, cut. <laughs> mm. Goodbye. That is. Mm. Oh, damn, that's good. Okay, I'm just going to sit here and finish eating this entire <laughs> roast myself and not share with anybody else. No, I'm going to share because, oh, mm hmm. Your mouth watering? Mmm. <laughs> wow. Mmm. 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 My God, that is amazing. Okay. So, if you really want to impress your uh, friends and family this holiday season or any other time of the year, this is the recipe for you, okay? Get yourself an offset smoker, something of decent quality like the Chargorilla Grand Champ XD. Use some real splits of wood like oak. Mesquite's also great for this recipe. Hickory's a nice one too. My favorite's oak. And um, cook it at a low temperature until you reach about 110 internal and then sear it. Get that temperature way up there, 425 to 450 and get this, get the crust, get the exterior of this nice and firm and, and dark and you'll get an amazing flavor. Everybody will be super impressed. You're gonna love it. This is the way you're gonna wanna do your prime ribs from now on, I guarantee it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like. Give me your comments and questions because I will answer your questions. I will respond to your comments. And if there's anything else you'd like to see me do in the future, I'd be happy to give it a shot. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. Take care.